All right, guys, so yesterday I was driving my car around and got it registered, and I don't know if you guys can see down there, those two green jets of coolant shooting out of this line. Driving down the road, looks like the car was getting hot, so we pulled over to the side of the road, popped the hood. 10 seconds after I popped the hood, and this, this coolant line just blows up the side of it. It just pops a hole in it, which is kind of annoying. I guess it was just an old hose. Um, so we're gonna have to replace that now. I'm glad I did this and got the car registered and drove it around before. I went drifting with it, so this didn't happen at another point when I could not fix it. Now I'm gonna try and get my car from outside, put it in the garage, see if we can pull the coolant line out, go buy a new one, so I could drive around in the snow a little bit. So now we gotta get the car cover off and it's snowing. Crap. I can't find my left, I mean right glove. I guess this is gonna be a one-handed kind of thing. Oh, oh here it is. All right. All right, so now I don't want to get this much snow on my car, so. Oh, uh, it'll fit in here. Uh oh. All right. was outside for three minutes this much snow crap I just don't want any snow on the hood I'm gonna have to be under here and I don't want snow melting all over me and I'm gonna try and see if I can fix my problem Be able to see exactly what I broke. Right in here, there's a coolant line that I broke. It just so I, yeah, it's not good. There's like pretty much all of the coolant drained out of the coolant system through this hole. This is, it's so loud. Um, so right now I'm gonna see if I can pull off the line. It's in a really awkward space under the intake manifold. And I was always concerned something under here would break. I think I'm gonna be able to get it out without removing intake manifold. And, all right, you have to move this car backwards a bit. Too much forwardsness. Good. I don't think you guys will be able to see this, but like this hose, it's this hose right here. At the other end of it, something exploded. This side's gonna be easy to get off. It's the other side that's like down there that I'm more concerned about. So, let's try and get that out. So I ended up just cutting off the end of the broken hose, like where it had exploded. I just cut that part off and then I just stuck it back on. 
uh, where it was supposed to go because I just cut off the part where it exploded and it fit on still with the turn and everything because I could not find the hose I needed anywhere. Like I went to an auto parts store, they ordered the part they thought it was, it was not that. They were like, this is the only thing we have. And I was like, all right, try to figure out what to do. And then this seemed like the most logical thing and it looks like it's gonna work. I mean, I tightened everything down. Nothing was like falling off or anything. And I don't see any reason why it shouldn't work. And obviously there are no turn signals up front. As on this side, I dug around inside the fender and I found this plug. Um, I put a light bulb in it. That was the right one. I went out and bought the right one. It doesn't do anything. I don't know if this thing is dead. So what I did was I cut off this connector, which would normally connect to the um, turn signal that's on the actual front bumper. Since I obviously don't have a turn signal on my front bumper, um, I don't need it. So I cut the connector off. I got these wires in, and I hooked two of these wires to my uh, AutoZone Pet Boys Universal turn signal. It worked. Um, obviously, it didn't work with these wires because I would have just used those. And same thing on this side. This side, there wasn't even a plug. There were just two wires. Nothing happened when I hooked either of them up either way. I don't know what it was. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut the connector on this side, too. I'll be able to hook up my uh, turn signals, and then we should be good to go. All right, so we got our new side marker here. This is just like a $5 one from Pet Boys, so I have two were ten dollars of course one for each side uh, we just wired it up a little bit um, I left it in this little weird chrome plastic housing thing to let you ground it e really easily out of there so I just left it in there and the other one wire is just hooked up to the other wire here um, it's pretty hack it looks a little ricey but um, it, it's gonna work so I can drive my car with some turn signals at some point I'm probably gonna paint this chrome thing black if I keep it maybe white I don't know we'll do something to make it not look as bad I'm not really liking the silver, so just smack the hazard lights, and then we're in business. All right, so my car has this problem where one of the headlights is broken, and I think that's because I dropped something on it and like smashed the bulb inside. So I bought a new headlight, and we're gonna replace it. I just don't remember which one's broken. I think it's the left one. I don't know. Let's see. Right one works. We gotta replace this one. Uh, we got a new one. Let's get going. Turns out the headlight actually did work that was in the car. Um, Cause I put the new one in and it still didn't work. And I looked behind the headlight and there was this connector right here. It was not even connected. Like it was just separate. And so obviously the headlight wouldn't work. So I just completely disassembled the entire assembly. It holds the headlight in place. Um, I like drilled all the bolts out cause everything was rusted in place. Um, because I thought I had to put a new headlight in. Obviously, that's not true, so now I don't have to fix everything, put the original headlight back in. That's just amazing. Alright, so now I've got both headlights working, and all really I needed to do was plug in one wire. But I made it take a lot longer than it needed to, replace the entire headlight, then put the other headlight back, and now we're good. Um, yeah. So that's done. Alright guys, so right here you can see, uh, this isn't a driver footwell, and... There's a little hole in the floor right here, it's right there, right in this thing. Um, it's kind of annoying that it's there because like I was driving around, like stuff was coming in here and it's just kind of really loud and like it's not good and like you can kind of smell exhaust fumes coming in there. I don't know, It's I just want to cover it up and since I got this Harbor Freight welder a few days ago, I figured might as well put it to use. I'm going to cut out um, pretty much everywhere it's rusted and then just go ahead and weld in a little sheet of like steel right there. And then we should be good because there's no more hole in the floor. All right, so I went ahead and welded everything up with the Harbor Freight welder. These welds actually look like absolute garbage. Um, that's okay though, because no one's really gonna see this just so there's not a hole in the floor and stuff doesn't come in when I'm driving. Um, I'm gonna might throw a little bit of paint on here just so it doesn't um, rust if any water gets on it because it's of course just like bare metal everywhere. You can see like right there is a little shiny. But um, other than that, it looks good. There's no longer a hole in the floor, which is really what I was going for in this fix. All right, so in the back here where the, oh my gosh. All right, so in the back here where the antenna is supposed to come out, um, the entire like antenna mechanism doesn't actually work. So a while ago, I like, I unbolted it and everything and I was going to pull it out and then like, it wouldn't come out. And it's just kind of like, it's in here, but like, I can't get it out cause like doesn't fit. I don't know what I'm gonna, it's like, I don't know, I'm gonna see if I can get it out again. Cause last time, like, I didn't actually disconnect it from this. Like this thing, when you move it, it actually moves too. So I'm gonna see if I can pull this out. When you're driving along, it just makes all this noise. It's just like, honestly, 
I'm gonna fix that right now. Like in here, you can see the mechanism and everything. Like it's all like this is it. It's like in here though, it's like you can't really like I can only see this because of the lens on the camera. But like it's just in there and like that thing is stuck up there and it's just like. All right, so I got the uh, um, antenna mechanism out. Uh, it wasn't that hard. Just a lot of a little bit of angle grinder and then all of this stuff came out. I mean, I, there's probably a better way to get it out. Like, I'm seeing now how I could have done it differently, but, eh, whatever. It's out now, and it's like, this motor didn't even work anyway. Like, it just kept spinning, but, like, it didn't actually move the antenna, which could be an easy fix or not. I don't know. Uh, so, we got that out now. So, now we just have this hole. We won't have any clunking noises when we're drifting around everywhere. Find a nice, like, sticker to put over this because, or maybe we can just use some Bondo. I don't know. We're going to figure something out. So when I got this new radiator hose and lower radiator hose, I never cut them in the middle to refit my uh, coolant temp sensor and like housing for it. I never cut this one because I was like nice and new and I didn't want to cut it, but I don't know why I didn't because I need this in there. Um, so right now I just fixed like some coolant leak over there and a lot of coolant leaked out. So there's like a lot of air in here. So there's like no water or coolant. So when I cut this, hopefully nothing will leak out because I don't think there's any coolant like on the top of the engine but if it is we'll just make a big mess that's okay and then we'll be able to go pick up some coolant bleed the cooling system and we should be good to go ow all right so there oh god um there is a bit of coolant in this line all right that's not cool it's raining outside and i heard water leaking noises which made me concerned Oh god, oh. Alright, that's good. I guess we're leaking a bit of coolant. Have our hose clamps. Throw one on there. Throw one on this side. Chuck this in here. Just tighten this down. Alright, there we go, it's in. Didn't lose that much coolant. Good to go. Alright, so I got this thing in and it actually looks kind of cool in here, like with the blue pipe and the orange fitting and everything. And like these nice shiny hose clamps there. Really nice. Alright, so right now I'm going to go ahead and install this fire extinguisher. And of course using this fire extinguisher mount. Because when I went drifting the last time, I did not have anywhere to put my fire extinguisher. So I pretty much just duct taped it right there, like in between the seat, because there's no one in the passenger seat. There's like two pieces of duct tape. Uh, yeah, so we don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and put the mount right here. Stick it right there. You can pass your foot well, and we should be good to go. So this was pretty easy. I just drilled uh, two holes, um, of course, where the bolt holes on this thing will line up to them. And I'm just going to take a screwdriver and screw uh, these two screws into the car. So now we've got our fire extinguisher out of the passenger footwell, so we don't have to duct tape it in between the seats anymore. So the factory shifter in, in my car, um, it feels a little sloppy, like when it's in gear, it like moves around a little bit. And I could fix this by getting a short shifter, but I don't really want a short shifter. I kind of like the longer throws, just so I know. I'm like 100% sure it's in gear. So um, I picked up two new things. I got this solid, solid shifter bushing, which goes like down there in here somewhere. And we'll put that in, and the factory one's probably worn out, broken, just like worn out, so it might, this might help tighten up that. And then um, there's like, this is like the shift boot, not this one, but like the one that goes like on top of the transmission. Mine is cracked, and this one's a lot like stiffer because it's new, so that should kind of help um, this thing not wobble around as much and make it feel a little bit more solid. So we're going to go ahead, um, pull this sh um, stuff out, and then go ahead and throw this thing in. And this thing too all right so we got the shift boot off and this is the thing that i'm going to be replacing this thing right here like this one's like all cracked and like just not good like you can see there's like stuff everywhere and it's just because it's cracked and like little oil comes through and stuff so we're gonna um pull this thing off and then actually go in and change out our shifter bushing too all right so i pulled the shifter out and right here this is the thing we're replacing it goes into like down in the hole right there so uh we're gonna pull this one off and stick our new metal one in there. All right, so I have the new bushing in and the this um, 
little shift boot thing here on. And I mean, it feels a little bit tighter. That it was actually in gear. It feels a little bit tighter. I think that's because of the shift boot. Solid shifter, but like it's still like, I knew it wouldn't fix all of this like slop in the gears, but I don't know. It feels better, I think. It kind of, you can definitely feel like which gear you're going into a little bit more, but that might just be me. I don't know. It could have done absolutely nothing. I don't know. All right, so I have the shifter pushing in as well as the shift boot. And I mean, I like just going through the gears, it doesn't feel that much better. I mean, it might be a little bit better, but um, it still is a little bit of slop in the gears. And I mean, really, if I want to fix this, I got to get a short shifter. I need a short shifter, but I don't want to pay for one. Fuck, 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 fuck. Maybe I'll get one. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, this is fine, though. I just wanted to see if I could fix it a little bit. But I think the most imp um, most important thing to fixing that was this like shift boot thing. Because the old one was just... I guess I have to like, pull it off, but like there's like rips in it and stuff. And like it was like really soft, so like it didn't feel that good. That's weird. It didn't feel that good when you were like going around. But like this definitely... Like, just in neutral. I know like the... It like just it feels like tighter bringing it to center with this one on it. Because um, it's just so much more rigid. So... It's better. We'll show, throw the um, other thing, shift boot thing back on there and then uh, throw everything back on and this will be done. So while I was installing my uh, shifter pushing thing, and honestly this did not do anything, like it's still really sloppy. And I think like, I don't even, I'm just, I managed to smash my head into my eBay rearview mirror. It was only like $3, but like I'm so sad because like I broke it and now it's all broken and it's like, eh. Yeah, I probably should, I'm gonna cut myself, but it's broken now, which is not good. All right, so something that really is kind of annoying in this car, as you can see on the left, I was messing with some fuses because my car was actually missing a lot of fuses, and I put them in, and now things work that didn't work, which is kind of cool. So, um, we have the clutch pedal obviously is right here, and uh, since I put the new clutch in, like the clutch, it's all at the top. Like the first maybe sixth of the, uh, maybe not sixth, first quarter of the like the push down whatever you want to call it, like depressing the clutch, that's when like all the clutch is, so, like everything past here is just like nothing. I'm going to adjust the clutch pedal so it's more in the middle, and then we should be good to shift gears. So for anyone who wants to know how to adjust this, um, it's pretty simple. You just adjust this nut, and this is of course the clutch pedal right here. This is the clutch pedal, and then up here, you've got all your things, and then you have this nut right here. And you can either turn it clockwise or counterclockwise, and then you're able to um, spin this rod right here. Either bring up when the clutch is engaged or like push it back so it happens later on. Uh, so that's pretty much it. It's really easy. And then you just, of course, tighten the bolt back up when you're done adjusting it. So like a year and a half ago, right about the time that I got the car, I thought it would be a good idea to tear off the mechanism that um, allows this rod that props the hood up to be attached to the car. Like there was a little metal tab here at one point and I imagine I just took a uh, wrench and just like tore at it until it broke off. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. So now I use like uh, a metal pipe to prop the hood open which is fine but I don't always have a metal pipe with me to prop the hood open with so sometimes I'm just like trying to hold the hood open and like looking to see what's happening down here. It's not good. I'm gonna uh, make something, a little tab that allows me to put this thing back in the car because it's ridiculous to not have it. There's no reason. Well, there are probably some reasons. I have no reason not to have it. Um, I know I could like cut the tabs off um, where the hinges are on the hood. So then the hood would just lean all the way back on my windshield. But I'm always like, like my biggest concern, not my biggest concern, a concern is I'm gonna be driving along, my hood's still flying up and like um, smash the windshield and I don't really want that to happen. So we're just gonna uh, stick with this. I know it could probably fly up still, but like there are things preventing it from flying up. So obviously it can't like go up higher than this. Like this is where it stops. So hopefully that's where it would stop. I mean, I have to tear through all that stuff, but hope so we're gonna go ahead and make a little bracket for this thing to pivot on. So we'll be able to prop the hood open with it. And then we should be good to not use a metal pole for that anymore.
All right, so I welded it up. It doesn't look that great, but it's not a great welder, and I don't really know how to weld that well. And I mean, it's gonna do its job. It's not gonna go anywhere. Like, it's a fine weld. It will hold, it's just not the prettiest. It's like I had to go back in, and I, like, fill in a couple of holes in places that I didn't put enough weld, but I mean, it's gonna hold, and that's really all that matters right now. I'm gonna go ahead and trim some off the top, because you really, I don't, there's no reason to have that much material on top, because it's just gonna get in the way of other things. So I'm gonna trim that down, and, we should be good to close the hood. And as you can see, it's working. Like, the hood's propped up with this. It's just chilling in there. Looks pretty good. And I mean, it works, and I like it can go down and clip down over there. So, I mean, this is really all it's supposed to do. So, success. So now it's become, like, a much nicer shape, I think. It's like a nice little, like, I don't even know what you'd call that. It's a nicer shape. It's a little bit smaller. Um, I think I'm gonna have to throw some paint on this thing because it's just going to rust instantly once it gets wet. So we're gonna like just get some stuff over there, paint it really quickly, and then we'll be off to work on something else. So right now I'm gonna test out the um, my new hood prop thing. It's not how it goes, it goes this way. There we go, so the hood's propped up. It's not as high up as it used to be. Like, it used to be a different, like I say, prop it differently, whatever. Take it out of here. Move this down there. Pick this thing up. And get a nice, what even is that? Get this thing down here. All right, so right now the car's got the factory motor mounts in it. And they're absolute garbage. Like, I've driven the car with them in it, and it just feels like... You can kind of feel the engine moving and then like kind of pushing some power to the wheels. Like, I don't know, I don't like it at all. It's just like the engine's barely connected to the car. And it just doesn't feel that good. So to fix that, so what we got here is the ISR Performance, formerly ISIS Performance, but they changed that name for some reason. <laughs> Motor mounts. They're pretty much solid motor mounts. They're of course gonna replace the factory ones and they'll give us a much better feel. Um, from just driving the car, it will feel a lot better. Um, it will make the car maybe shake a little bit more, but I'm willing to sacrifice some comfort for the performance. Um, the reason I got these, they were really cheap on Black Friday, so I decided, you know what, I'll just get them. I know I'm gonna want them eventually. And since I've been driving the car a little bit more lately, I really have decided I need these now, so I'm glad I got them. They were cheap. I'm gonna go ahead and throw them in right now. Okay, this is going to be a complete and utter shit show. I have to take out the fucking fuck. So I went ahead and set up the engine hoist here. I of course had it because I did the dual cam swap in this car. And I figured that would probably be the easiest way to uh, swap out the motor mounts. Like I know there are probably other ways I could do it, but this was the easiest. I just set it up. It took like, like five minutes. I'm just going to wrap around the... um. Intake manifold and exhaust manifold, and I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit after I loosen up the bolts, and I should be able to get the old uh, motor mounts out, and we'll throw the new ones in and just lower it back down a couple of inches. All right, so I got the um, driver's side factory motor mount out. Um, I'm gonna do them one at a time. I'm gonna put the other one in, and then I'll go to the other side. Um, so I like I unbolted everything. I just like the engine kind of lifted at an awkward angle, so I'm just gonna replace this one first. So like you can just see it's like bad and weak. Um, so, we've got our new motor mounts here, which are very nice, and I just got dirty because I figured they're all dirty, but like, they're going to be nice and good in there. So we're going to get out, go ahead and throw this thing in, and then we will get underway on the other side. So in order for me to have... Ah, alright. Oh, God. I gotta get off of this thing. It's too tight. Oh, my God. There's not enough room to So in order to have uh, replaced the motor mounts, I needed to uh, unbolt the transmission mount, or the transmission cross member, so I just went ahead and did that before. I pulled out the old motor mounts because I really couldn't actuate the engine or pivot the engine to be able to get the motor mounts out, so I had to unbolt it. It's just being propped up on the, up on the jack so it could like pivot up and down right here. 
Um, so yeah, we're done with that. So we're gonna go ahead and bolt this thing back in. Then we'll be able to do some things because this is attached. So now we're gonna get the cart out of the garage. I'm not gonna turn it on because there's absolutely no coolant in it. And I don't really want to turn it on like this. So we're gonna do the old push pull by yourself thing. We'll shut this. The organization over here is unreal. We're good. All right, so um, I thought it would be a good idea a while ago to paint the engine bay white. Um, it was not a good idea. It's disgusting and covered in grease. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and degrease the engine bay with engine bay degreaser. I'm just gonna cover up everything with like plastic bags that shouldn't get wet, I think with like the degreaser and everything. And then we're gonna go ahead, degrease everything, wash it off, and then hopefully it will look a little bit better than it does now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move the car somewhere. So when I degrease it and get stuff everywhere, there's not a huge mess in the driveway. So we're gonna put it, so we make a huge mess in the street, but I don't wanna turn it on because I don't wanna get the engine warm and like start a fire. So I'm gonna try and do as much as I can. This is the car. Oh gosh, I need to put the key in the ignition so I can turn. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, because turning this car, oh god, no power steering, of course, turning with a welded diff is a humongous pain in the butt. I can't, oh, shoot, fuck. Ugh. Oh God. So I emptied like a solid can of this stuff onto the engine bay and the parts of the engine. Um, I'm just going to let it sit for a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and wash it off with the hose. So I just rinsed everything off and it looks so much cleaner now. It's like everything just looks better. There's less grease everywhere. It doesn't look as bad. I actually think it looks good now. I mean, good, but it's definitely not a lot nicer than it was before. I'm just going to let it sit out here in the sun and dry off a little bit and I'll go ahead and start it up and put it back in the driveway. All right, so we got the new motor mounts in the car now, and it just feels so much better. Like, when you start, the car it feels so solid, and, like, when you're driving, it feels so solid, and, like, everything's just all stiff. The entire car does shake, but, I mean, race car, so who cares? Uh, so we're gonna go 